on Action News. Action News, Delaware Valley's leading news program with Gary Papa, Cecily Tynan, and Jim Gardner. It was the rematch Eagles fans have been waiting for since January. It turned out to be a defensive stalemate. Only a Buccaneers field goal until this TD catch by Joe Jarabicious with three minutes, 22 left in the third. And this was his first catch. Monday night, Jim's off. I'm Rob Jennings. The big story in Action News is a disappointing debut for the Eagles and their fans. Gary Papa's live at the link with details. Gary? Well, the pregame show was great, wasn't it, yeah, Rob? But great. after that, you know, everything else <laughs> fell apart for the Eagles, losing 17 to nothing. I'm sure you saw that stat on ABC. No team ever shut out in the first week has ever reached the Super Bowl. The guy that killed the Eagles, of course, in the NFC title game last year, Joe Jurevicius, two X incredible plays. First of all, the first touchdown, the game, of course, up 7-3-0 uh, at that point, Tampa Bay, as we go to those highlights. This is the play in the corner where he does keep his feet in bounds. Lito Shepard playing in place of the injured Bobby Taylor. Cannot bat down the ball. Jervicious scores. Second Sap has helped sell big game tonight. Yeah, uh, it's just big to get our first win. Uh, hopefully this is, you know, a telltale sign of what's to come, but we played strong and uh, let's hope it happens. That showed you're vicious. Now, in a few moments, we'll be live with Andy Reid. Of course, and some reaction to the lack of offense tonight, lack of a running game, lack against anything against that tough Tampa Bay defense. Also, some injuries of concern. Bobby Taylor. Brian Dawkins got x-rays just a few moments ago. He might be hurting right now. We've got to worry also about Brandon Whiting as well. We'll have the injury update. Andy Reid live in just a few moments. But there's no joy in Mudville tonight, Rob. Your Eagles have struck out in the home opener, the first game ever played at Lincoln Financial Field. Gary Popper reporting live for now in the tunnel at the link. We'll check you later, Gary. Yes, Rob. Before the game, a big party kicked off the first regular season game at the link. The highlight was a spectacular fireworks and laser light show. Activities included a movie looking at the Eagles' past and present, musical performances from Irish tenor Roman Tynan and Philadelphia native Teddy Pendergrass, who sang the national anthem. And right before the kickoff, Rocky Balboa, also known as Sylvester Stallone, <laughs> got the fans fired up with a special appearance. Now let's check in with Michelle McCormack live outside the link to find out what they thought of tonight's Eagles game. Michelle? Well, Rob, it's still a family show, so we're going to use some uh, safety precautions here in reporting back to you. Certainly a very different uh, atmosphere in the parking lot. Really now all we have to look forward to is the wait to get out of the parking lot after the tailgating. I want to show you Mark here. He, he did this great frame-up of his ticket. This is going to be a collector's item. <laughs> What do you think, Mark? A collector's item here? Not the way they played tonight, but, but, it's how you finish, not how you start. Yeah. One game oh, not well, well, that's the way we want to think. And to think, there was such hope just hours earlier. Fans were chomping at the bit, heeding the advice and showing up early. The free commemorative coin at the door was a nice surprise, but nothing compared to seeing a mink condition Sylvester Stallone emerge from the balcony as the Rocky theme blared. Lovely. I, that was like 4th of July and a laser light show mixed together. The best. The best game I've been to in a long time. That was great. This was the best. This is the best ever. But it did beg the question, could the game live up to all the hype before kickoff? At halftime, the verdict was in. No, I don't think so. I think they got to work a lot harder. They are not, they're not performing well. They're not executing. They need to get a motion. We're still waiting for the game to, we're still waiting for the Eagles to come on a little bit. We want to win. We want to win. So to pass the time, booing Bucks fans became the rage. However, fans were singing the praises of the bathroom facilities and the cup holders in the stands. However, some in the upper deck say they really couldn't get a clear shot of the sidelines. And if you were waiting to see the new Vera Wang cheerleader outfits, well, that was even more disappointing in addition to the score. Live at the link, Michelle McCormack, Channel 6 Action News. It's going to be all right, guys. Yeah, baby! <laughs> 
Okay, thank you, Michelle. Now, Dan Cuellar, tell us about parking and traffic at the link. Any problems there, Dan? Well, Rob, police have had an army out here directing traffic, and considering the massive crowd out here tonight, they seem to be managing it as best as they can. It is, uh, as you would expect, a gridlock right now. If take a look over here, Ronald, show them what we have. Gridlock, essentially. Parking, on the other hand, big mess. But then again, that was expected. Move up! Get out the way! Get out the way! Get out the way! Move, Bucks! Yes, that's pretty much what they were saying out on the roadways, too. Bring it up! Hold on! Pull it up! Bring it up! Move, Bucks! Get out the way! Get out the way! Get out the way! Build all these beautiful complexes and keep the traffic patterns exactly the same. It doesn't make sense. Traffic is like out right here. It's congested around here. That's why it paid to get here early. We got here early, and uh, despite the fact that they would not let us park in our usual lot, we were able to get good parking. Parking, or lack thereof, was what really set some people off. Parking sucks. Construction of the new baseball stadium made a big chunk of parking spaces, and a Toyota convention kept the lots on the Broad Street side of the Wachovia Center shut down to Eagles fans until just before 7.30. Getting into the lot is yes. horrible. Yeah, yeah, it's been about 40 minutes. 40 minutes trying to get into the lot? Yep. Yeah, from Broad Street to this. The convention finally cleared, and the parking lots opened to the fans. <laughs> then there was the confusion over handicap parking. There was no place for us to park. There was no um, handicap part, and I have two bad knees. Connie Bell, a 40-year season ticket holder, had to get help to walk all the way to the link from the other side of the Vet Stadium. A die-hard fan, if there ever was one. I love the Eagles. <laughs> Despite the parking problems, for those who planned ahead and came early, the consensus was... Parking's fine. Parking's fine. They did a good job with the parking this time. It wasn't bad at all. Got right in the FDR park, no problem at all. Back live here at Darien and Patterson, where the traffic is oozing out of the uh, link tonight. Expected situation. Overall, police are being given a lot of credit for the way they are handling the traffic situation. A lot of people thought it would be a lot worse. SEPTA also being given credit because a lot of people, they kept those trains running all night long, and thousands of people were using those trains to get to and from the link. We're live here at the Sports Complex. I'm Dan Cuellar. Channel 6 Action News. Thank you, Dan. Now we go back inside the stadium. Andy Reid's yeah, news conference right now. He is blaming himself the for the offense. Let's listen. Good to have a cover. And it seemed like Donovan was under pressure all night. His defense, his interesting defense, did anything different than you weren't expecting? Well, they did some good things. I, you know, I wouldn't say he was under pressure the whole night. He, you know, there, there were a few snaps in there. I would, you know, but there were times he had time and. I could have done a better job of giving him the right call, so he had somebody open. Take two, two more plays. Would you like to see Donovan take some chances there at the end of that <laughs> half? Even Whoops. Okay, well, what we did glean from that very brief uh, look at Andy uh, Reid's uh, news conference was that he was blaming him. Okay, we're going back. Let's saw, listen uh, again. It was right to do, and the coverage dictated that, and, you know, he made the right decision. Well, they did a good job. They did a good job of mixing coverages. It wasn't just cover two that they played. They, they, make, they did a nice job. Monty did a nice job of that. Okay, locker room is open. Whoa, that, that was short. Well, Coach Reed uh, usually uh, appears subdued, uh, but this was even more so tonight. Uh, the disappointing Eagles debut and their 17-0 loss to the Buccaneers. And what we did glean from... Uh, Coach Reed's uh, brief news conference there was that he was blaming himself basically for not calling the right offensive plays. More on that later. Now, security was tight for tonight's game. No arrest reported, but Action News was there. As several fans were detained by security guards. No word what uh, caused their detentions. If you were not at the link, the game still provided a lot of thrills. At first, several hundred people packed Barnaby's, McDade Boulevard, Ridley Township, Delaware County, and over in Camden County, New Jersey, Action News found plenty of team spirit at Ott's Green Top Inn on Route 73 in Berlin. So many places, so many ways to cheer on those birds tonight all across the Delaware Valley. We will have much more in the game coming up on Football Frenzy with Gary Papa later on Action News. And still ahead, the other day's news. 
A woman's body has been found burning in Fairmount Park. We'll have a live report. Striking Catholic high school teachers in Philadelphia reject another offer. We'll have the latest. Cecily? Well, after temperatures in the 80s today get set for a cooling off period, we'll explain in the Active Weather Friday forecast. And a woman is mauled to death by the dog she adopted. That story and more when Action News comes right back. ABC. This here is for my fam. Uh -huh. Come together to this jam. Yep. Everybody wave your hands. All the families cross the land. We are family. I got you and me together watching six ABC. Like my mom, like my sister, like my mom. Yeah. Let everybody sing. It's all about the fam. Millie. Celebration to the jam. me first, I think. I called Marty up. Wife says, don't lie to me. The first thing I asked Walt was, what's the matter with your furnace? Put your wife on a phone. Maybe I'll believe her more. What are you talking about? So she says, Tom, get a Bible, put your hand on it. And he says, we, we hit, hit the, the big one. one. We hit the Pennsylvania lottery for 27 million. This was meant to be for a group of guys to hit like this. This should be the last paycheck we should ever need. The Super 6 jackpot is now at least $40 million. clearance time on an incredible selection of Toyota SUVs. Your Toyota dealers are extending the clearance deals on SUVs, like 2.9% APR on the Style and RAV4, great option package discounts, and low lease and finance rates on the smooth riding Highlander, roomy Sequoia, and powerful 4Runner. Toyota time. The time is now. If you see news happening, call the Action News tip line toll-free at 866-NEWS-6 or contact us online at WPVI.com. Homicide detectives are investigating the discovery of a woman's body in Fairmount Park tonight. Action News reporter John Rollins is live on the scene with the story. John? Well, Rob, we're standing in a parking lot that's just below the playing fields of the Belmont Plateau. Uh, a few hours ago, park officials found and made an unsettling discovery behind that steel shipping container behind me there that's used to store athletic equipment. That discovery brought both the fire department and homicide detectives. Police say it was about 9.30 when two park guards were shutting these gates that would close the parking lot. They noticed an orange glow at the far end of the lot adjacent to the shipping container. On closer inspection, they found a human body that had been set afire. The fire department was called. Detectives say the body appears to be that of an African-American female. It is not clear if the victim died here or elsewhere. Investigators say it is also too early to tell if there is any connection with this incident and the murder of Rebecca Park last July. Park, a 30-year-old medical student, was raped and killed while jogging in Fairmount Park. Her body was discovered in a remote section of the park about two miles north of this location. Well, at this point, as we say, our location is a parking lot adjacent to the Belmont Plateau. Uh, detectives and crime scene investigators are expecting this will be a long night as they try to determine just what occurred here. Live in Fairmount Park, John Rollins, Channel 6 Action News. Rob? Okay, John, thank you. A 67-year-old Medford, New Jersey woman has been mauled to death by her own Doberman Pinscher. Valerie DeSwart's body was found in her home yesterday. She adopted that dog from the Associated Humane Societies in Newark. 10 days ago after an internet search led her there. Officials say the dog was never violent. It's being quarantined in Medford's animal control now. 
Representatives for the Philadelphia Archdiocese and the striking lay teachers talk for three more hours tonight. No progress. Talks will resume tomorrow afternoon at 1. Today, union leaders rejected the latest contract offer from the Archdiocese. Sticking point remains salary and health benefits as the strike enters its second week. All 22 Archdiocesan high schools will be closed again tomorrow. A 240 horsepower V6 engine. A Honda satellite links navigation system. Dual zone automatic climate control. An XM satellite radio. All this plus an extra large leather trimmed interior. For when you need it most. The spacious Accord EXV6 for 2004. From Honda. Ten million dollars, amen. It would have been the perfect heist, except for one complication. The police officer has altered our plans. You kill me and you become the guy they never stop hunting. You be job one. Samuel L. Jackson, Mila Jovovich, Stellan Skarsgård. You're really gone. When they catch you, the animal brain's gonna kick in, so you'll run. Now that why? Then they shoot you. No good deed. Rated R. Starts Friday at a theater near you. People ask me what I drive off the racetrack. Simple. Ford Mustang. Nothing on the road compares to Ford Mustang. Now you can drive off in a Mustang with 0% financing or $2,500 cash back. At 0% financing or $2,500 cash back, Mustang truly is an American original. Ford Mustang. What else would I drive? Ford Mustang. If you haven't looked at Ford lately, look again. Only at your Quality Plus Ford dealer. Fires in the home kill approximately 5,000 people each year. Having the proper safety devices can make the difference. Please install fire extinguishers in your home to aid you in creating an escape path to safety. This simple step will help save lives. The 2003 Chevy Trailblazer and Trailblazer EXT. You can take them just about anywhere with confidence inside and out. See your local Chevy dealer today. The Recording Industry Association of America started a drive to stop illegal downloading and trading of copyrighted music. The RIAA is suing 261 people who share copyrighted music over the Internet. Millions of Americans swap songs online because it's easy and it's free. But the music industry blames the song swappers for a sharp decline in CD sales. The lawsuits seek up to $150,000 for each song downloaded. On we go to <laughs> Cecily. A beautiful night at the link tonight before the game yeah, started. Yeah, yeah. Shame about the game, but the weather certainly cooperating. Storm Tracker 6 live showing that nothing is going on around the Delaware Valley. A few sprinkles just south of Dover, but essentially we were kept dry thanks to high pressure, and this is creating a little bit of cloud cover sneaking up from the south, but the clouds are forced above the high pressure dome, so that's why they're really thin, and tomorrow we should see a good amount of sunshine. You can see how close, though, the remnants of Henri got to us, that low pressure moving out to sea. But then that front kind of just pushing the moisture down to the south. So that's why we should remain dry through the night. And tomorrow should be another pretty nice day. AccuWeather says for tonight, high pressure building in. Another beautiful night for sleeping. A few high clouds here and there. Overnight low 
58 degrees in the suburbs, 64 for Center City, so very comfortable. Then for tomorrow, a mixture of clouds and sunshine, maybe a little bit more cloud cover than today. Our afternoon high will be slightly cooler thanks to an easterly flow, 76 degrees instead of temperatures in the low 80s. And then as we head into the middle of the week, not a lot of changes. High pressure still in control over weather. That means, again, partly sunny with a high of 76 degrees. The cough Mackey weather. Nice stretch of weather on the way. Beautiful weekend and today not bad. 83 degrees for our high with our morning low of 63. Right now in Allentown, 68. Trenton, 64. Atlantic City, 65. Wilmington, 67. And Dover, 68. Center City, 69. Camden, 68. The Northeast Outsider Studio, 67. We're live Sky 6 taking a look at the Center City skyline. Partly cloudy officially in Philadelphia. F pretty comfortable. 67 degrees. Humidity, 81%. So that's not all that bad this time of the night. Barometer, 30. 0.16 holding steady. Winds easterly at 10. The ocean temperature 73. AccuWeather says for tonight, some clouds overnight low down to 58 in the suburbs, 64 for Center City. The exclusive AccuWeather 5 day forecast, mixture clouds and sunshine for rush hour 66. Then for tomorrow, cooler than today, and the breeze will pick up. It's almost feeling like a fall day, 76 for the high. Wednesday, partly sunny, 76. Thursday, clouds mixing with sunshine again, 78. Then on Friday, clouding up a little bit more, 78 degrees. Possibility of a shower and Saturday also a mixture of clouds and sunshine can't rule out the chance of a shower 78 degrees so temperatures holding in the upper 70s with a mixture of clouds and sunshine pretty easy forecast good thank you Cecily still ahead on action news tonight opening night frustrations for the Eagles Gary Papa with football frenzy when action news continues Hey, hon, how are you? We're good. You know us, up at the crack of dawn, right on schedule, no fooling around. In fact, I gotta go real busy here, and uh, Dip says hi. <laughs> you kind of have to know. I feel like I kind of do. Picture mail that talks from Sprint. Now at Sprint stores, get great deals on a wide selection of PCS Vision picture phones starting at $99.99. Share it when it happens. city. It looks good in the country. And with a special lease price of just $219 a month, imagine how good it'll look in your driveway. The stylish Nissan Altima, now $219 a month. Hi, Pop. How's that new football player down at the office? He's swell, Billy. He tackled a copier today. Can't get enough football. Then he clotheslined a VP. It was neato. Then get the Inquirer and the Daily News this Tuesday for two must-have post-game specials. Here, Billy. Get yourself a paper. Look for Inquirer Eagles Extra, the most comprehensive post-game analysis around. And get Birdwatch and go inside the game Daily News style. Heck, get 100 papers. Unparalleled post-game coverage. The Inquirer and Daily News. You've got to get a paper. Jeepers, it's going to be nifty. To get through four years of college, you can order a lot of coffee to go, or you can order a lot of PC to go. Do schoolwork without being in school when you upgrade to a compact Presario with the Intel Pentium 4 processor. For only $9.99 after rebate, you get desktop power that goes where you go. So you can email photos, watch movies, burn CDs, and oh yeah, do schoolwork. Call today and get free shipping and compact desktops from just $349. When it really matters, choose Compaq. Back to the link we go and Gary Papa, a lot of uh, Eagles fans' balloons were popped tonight, Gary. A lot of everything was popped tonight, Rob Jennings. First, the injury update, Brian Dawkins. They think it's just a sprain. They're going to check it out tomorrow. Also, Brandon Whiting as well, and also Bobby Taylor. More tests coming, but nothing that serious right now, but a lot of serious injuries to the psyche of this football team. Joining us is, is Freddie Mitchell. And, and you saw the pregame, obviously, and things are going crazy, and the sky's exploding, and it's the new place, and revenge, and all that. It, it, all that up means all that down. How deflated was tonight for, for you as a football player? Oh, it's not deflating at all. You know, you learn from your mistakes. This is a long season. You know, you got to look at that. You know, this isn't college football. This is a professional football team, and we have 16 games. Everybody's looking at this. I mean, we're not going to let our past affect our future. 
You know, we're going to learn from these mistakes. We're going to go work harder, and we're going to go put it down. As a receiver, you've certainly got to say, Joe Juravicious, let's take a look at some of these highlights. Two spectacular catches. First one over Lito Shepard, second one with Troy Vincent. I mean, that's the game of football. Is, is Joe Juravicious the first person to ever catch a touchdown pass? No. I mean, you can't worry about that. All that stuff is lucky. They got lucky. They played the game of football. It's about, it's about changes like that. You can't harp on stupid stuff like that. Look at this. It's luck. Lucky to some degree, but then, of course, your offense wasn't able to run the ball. The attack wasn't consistent. And outside of Donovan at the last fourth quarter with a drive, the offense couldn't get quite into gear against a very fast defense. Hey, it's a very fast defense. It's the number one defense out there, you know? Uh, we we got to work on that, and we just got to go and don't let our past affect our future. You know, all this, all this mama jumbo about their defense and what happened, this is the, one, the first game. The last two years, we've lost our first game. Everybody didn't see that, but we bounced back no matter what. So we got to go in there and work hard and put in more work. Candid comments, Freddie Mitchell. There it is. All right, thank you. All right. That's what he says. Let's go to the pregame. And at that point, of course, everyone is sky high thinking it's the new place and maybe they'll be able to get against the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. Might be able to have a different story from last year. Here's tonight's pregame story at Lincoln Financial Field. Eagles on Monday night. Win on three. One, two, three. Win. On the rock, baby. Down in the lake. Do not score a touchdown. Second quarter action. Tampa Bay's up 3 0. Defense. Simeon Rice. Donovan's old high school buddy collapses the pocket. Greg Spires as well. All over McNabb. Eagles moving backwards. Also, Eagles defense. Nate Wayne wants the coverage. Nate Wayne with the coverage. Ball goes up in the air. Playing center field. Troy Vincent. 3 0 Tampa Bay as we head to halftime at Lincoln Financial Field. Third quarter action, Tampa Bay is driving Brad Johnson to Joe Juravicious. Lito Shepard in for the injured Bobby Taylor. What a spectacular catch by Juravicious. Somehow, somehow, with great athletic ability, he's able to get both feet inbounds, catch the ball, twist his body, and the Tampa Bay Buccaneers are up 10-0 after three quarters of play. Also some great defense by Simeon Rice. This is amazing. Blowing around the offensive lineman, leaping over his own man, and gets to Donovan McNabb. He was unstoppable tonight. 10-0, Tampa Bay after three, and there's more in number four. You got to see this play. Brad Johnson to Warren Sapp to the 11-yard line. Big guy. Number 99 all the way to the 11. Then Johnson to Joe Juravicious. He tips it to himself as Troy Vincent tries to make the play, and the pride of Penn State scores again. And it is caught in the end zone by Juravicious for another touchdown. It was deflected by Juravicious. Oh, my. 17-0 is the final. We'll have more coming up in just a few moments. Live with Nate Wayne. We'll also be talking to the defensive players, Darwin Walker and also Mark Simino. But let's head back to our studio. Uh -huh. And, Phil, uh, how, how about the Phillies? Uh, any good news hey, from down in Atlanta hey, tonight? Hey, Gary, did you ever think you'd hear the, the term, we always have the Phillies? Yeah. <laughs> it's only do one we? game. It's only one game. Yes. We, we do. They're still in the wild card uh, hunt. Yeah, after going 6-1 and one on their recent seven-game homestand, Phillies hitting the road for a seven games against the Braves and Pirates. And, well, tonight they began in Atlanta. We'll pick it up with the Phillies already up one nothing in the top well, of the first. And that is Mike Lieberthal with two on going yard to give the Phillies a 4 nothing lead after one. Millwood working with a lead, that is, until it evaporated. Braves.